this time. We thank you because every day, every moment, you load us with tremendous blessings and benefits. We're asking, oh Lord, you open our eyes to all the benefits awaiting us today in Jesus' name. Unlimited blessing, untold blessing. So, Lord, we pray that you grant your people today in Jesus' name. All spiritual blessings in heavenly places. All physical benefits you give to us here on earth. Oh, Lord, we pray nobody will miss your tremendous transforming hand even today in Jesus' name. Lord, among the children of Israel came to the time when there was no one feeble person in all their tribes. And Lord, we're looking up to you that in our church, children church, youth church, and all the other areas, oh Lord, we're praying. It will come to the time and this may well be the moment when there will be no one feeble person among us. No sickness among us. No premature death among us. No calamity among us. No disaster among us. Oh Lord, we pray, fulfill it in Jesus' name. In all our states and all our regions and all our cities and all our towns and all our villages all over this country and continent of Africa. Oh Lord, we pray and beyond that Lord, your blessing will enrich every life in Jesus' name. Show us the way. Show us the way. Show us the way to personal blessing, the way to perpetual blessing, and the way to permanent blessing in every life in Jesus' name. Lord, everyone today, everyone today, everyone today, a touch of miracle. A touch of miracle. A touch of miracle upon everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, we accept it. Lord, we receive it. Lord, we know it's going to be so in every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> you know, sometimes it looks funny. Some people clapping, some people looking, some people whatever. <laughs> wonderful. I said wonderful. The angels will carry your clapping to heaven in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You can be seated now. We're talking on something tremendous and very important, very special today. You see, many people, they know about healing, but they don't know about health. They know about, you know, getting sick and getting up and getting sick and getting well and getting sick and getting well again. But God can keep you healthy for one whole day. He can keep you healthy then for one whole week. Then he can keep you healthy for one whole month. What if in a whole year, from now till the end of this year, that no sickness touches your body, that no infirmity touches your body, that it just keeps you healthy and strong and whole, he will do it. That's why we're talking about a lifetime, a lifetime of divine healing. A lifetime of divine healing. That's what God does today. He continues tomorrow. He continues next week. He continues for the rest of your life. Why not? That's what you learned about the people of God in Bible days. Show me the time and show me the passage when Noah was sick. Show me the time and show me the chapter and the verse where Abraham could not, even at a hundred years of age, he was up and running. You'll be up and running in Jesus' name. Tell me about Moses. Tell me about Joshua. Tell me about all those men of God and women of God too. They kept healthy. We're going to keep healthy in Jesus' name. And that's why we're here today. If you are healthy already, praise the Lord. But the Lord wants to put the key in your hand. And this key, by the grace of God, will keep you strong on your feet all the days of your life in Jesus' name. And then, of course, if you're sick, if you're sick, and there's a good news coming to you today, the power of the Lord is saying, oh, to take all the sicknesses away from your body, even today in Jesus' name. 
because as we hear the word of God, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, and that's what comes into us and builds up faith, and that faith will drive every disease and every infirmity, every deformity will drive everything away from your life in Jesus' name. And then, of course, all those paths of darkness, they have no hold upon your life. Did you know that when you are on the Lord Jesus Christ, Satan, and all those evil spirits, where are they now? I said, where are they? They're under your feet, and you'll march on them and trample on them. They'll not be on your head, in your eyes, in your ears, in your throat, in your lungs, in your livers, in your heart, in your body anymore. They come under your feet in Jesus' name. And I give all those demonic powers, I transfer them now. I transfer them away from your head, away from your chest, and away from your body. I transfer them to the very ground under your feet, and you will overcome them in Jesus' name. The Lord is so wonderful. And then look at the provision he has given to all his children. And he says, this is what I've given to you. He says, I'm going to do a new thing. Will thou not know it? I'm going to know it this morning. I said, I'm going to know it this morning. Look at Exodus chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 20. Exodus chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 20. Behold, I send an angel before thee. Hey, don't misunderstand that. That's angel with a capital A. And those who have studied Christology, and those who have studied, you know, Christ came even before the Old Testament expired. They knew that this is talking about the Lord himself. I'm going to send him before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. It says, beware of him, obey his voice, provoke him not. For he will not pardon you, trans, uh, not pardon your transgressions. He says, for my name is in him, but he thou shalt indeed obey his voice. He's telling us now, if we will obey the voice of the Lord who guides us, who shepherds us, who leads us, who directs us, who controls us, the Lord who instructs us, who shows us the way that we ought to go. It says, if thou wilt indeed, in the real sense, from your heart, transparently obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to all thine enemies. Give me a good amen there. I will be, the almighty God says, I will be an enemy to all your enemies. I pity your enemies. If they don't turn, if they think they're going to hurt you, they'll hurt themselves. Because the almighty God says, I'll be an enemy to all your enemies. And then he says, an adversary to all thine any all the adversaries. For my angel shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. And thou shalt not bow down to their gods, to their idols, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them, and quite break down their images, is telling us that we're not to worship idol idol in the village idol of the sea idol in the ocean idol of the community idol of the tribe idol of your parents idol of the family it says we break them down we'll break them down i said we'll break them down you know there are some people that live in the city and they still hang all these things on their necks and they have all these waistbands. They bring all the idols from the village. All the symbols and all the types and all the physical representations of their idols from the village. They have it in their finger. They have it on their neck. They have it in their ears. They have it everywhere. You throw them away in Jesus' name. And now look at verse 25. It says, And ye shall serve the Lord your God. And ye shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take, and I will take, tell me, and I will take, I can't hear you, I will take. 
sickness away from the midst of thee look at yourself the midst of thee in your body the lord will take sickness away and then from your children the lord will take sickness away from your wife the lord will take sickness away and from your husband the lord will take sickness away from the old family he says from the midst of thee i'll take sickness away there shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in the land the number of thy days i will fulfill the number of thy days i will fulfill the number of thy days i will fulfill i'm going to live long i said i'm going to live long disease will not cut short my life sickness will not cut short my life infirmity will not cut short say it for yourself will not cut short my life all those disasters will not cut short my life like abraham like moses like joshua and like joseph like all those great people of god you are going to live long in jesus name let me show you an example deuteronomy chapter 34 deuteronomy chapter 34 i'm reading from verse 7 deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 7 and moses was an hundred and twenty years old and moses was an hundred and twenty years old before i go on you know moses was already a uh, 40 years of age and then he tried to do something he did it wrong and because he did that thing wrong he had to run away and then he went he just was living his life now it's like a forgotten man at the back side of the desert and then 40 years passed 80 years gone already and if you are let's say you are even 60 years of age now and i'm going around and i say brother are you a worker oh, oh say pastor i'm already 60 years of age there's no point anymore i cannot be a worker any what can i i'm 60 already moses was 80 and if you are 75 years of age i'm moving around and i'm saying are you going to work for god say pastor i wish i knew that you know before this time because time is gone now i'm 75 already and the lord is saying at 80 the hand of the lord will come upon your life i said the hand of the lord will come upon your life so you are not a one who can still eat and breathe and stand and talk and then you can move the power of god is still there at 80 the lord called moses and he said up now i'm going to send you to egypt you're going to deliver the children of israel that ministry is coming to you right now whatever your age may be you are not too old yet the lord is saying the time has come when everyone young and old men and women will rise up and the power of the lord will energize you and saturate you and stir you up and you will do something for the glory and the kingdom of god in this generation in jesus name and moses was 120 years old when he died his eye was not dim his eye was not deep his eye was not deep think about that first of all his spiritual eye was not deep at the age of 120 the lord was still talking to him he was still seeing afar off what will happen to the children of israel in the future and because his, his spiritual eyes were not dream were not dim it affected his physical eyes too because of that his physical eyes were not dim and then he goes on to say no his natural force abated why oh because his spiritual faith was not abated did not decrease did not do it and because his spiritual face did not decrease because of that even his natural force did not abate and i'm saying that as your days are so shall your strength be in jesus name Deuteronomy chapter 33 and i'm reading here from verse 25 get your pen out because you must mark this one you must mark this one every time you open your bible you look at the places you are about to say praise the lord that is mine praise the lord that is mine and it will be yours in jesus name verse 25 thy shoes shall be iron and brass thy shoes shall be iron and brass why you know many people read that they don't understand because the serpent is under your feet because the demons are under your feet 
because Satan is under your feet. And while you're marching on, you're not marching on with, uh, you know, bare feet. It says, thy shoes to tread them, to crush them, to destroy them shall be iron and brass. And this is mine. I said, this is mine. I said, this is mine. And as thy days, so shall thy strength be. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. Are you there? As thy days, so shall thy strength be. Are you there? As thy days, so shall thy strength be. You didn't have, you didn't have arthritis when you are young. You are not going to have it today. You didn't have cancer when you were young, so you are not going to have it today. You didn't have weakness when you were young, you are not going to have it today. You didn't have dim eyes, blind eyes when you were young, you are not going to have it today. You didn't have brain damage when you were young, you are not going to have it today. You didn't have liver problem when you were young, you are not going to have it today. You didn't have all the coverture of the backbone when you were young, you are not going to have it today. And you didn't have, you know, all those just lying down, lying down, all those years, and it says, as your days you'll be getting better and better stronger and stronger healthier and healthier and you're going to be moving on from little to much to many and to multitude in jesus name it says there is none like unto the god of jeshurun who rideth upon the heaven in thy help and in his excellency on the sky the eternal god is thy refuge the eternal God is who is thy refuge underneath is thee at the everlasting arms and he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee and then shall say destroy them Israel shall dwell in safety alone the fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine and also his heavens shall drop down deal it will happen to everyone in jesus name uh, look at the new testament now i'm looking at so john chapter ch chapter one only one chapter so john verse two so john verse two and here he tells us what he wishes for us what he desires for us what he promises unto us what he grants unto us he tells us in third john i'm looking at verse two beloved any beloved around here this morning beloved that's who i am beloved that's who you are if you are born again if you are a child of god and he says i love you you are beloved he has loved you with everlasting love and that love will work mightily in your life in jesus name he says beloved i wish above all things think about that in fact uh, the people have studied greek they tell us that word i wish it means i pray I demand, I proclaim, I ask, I'm asking for you. I'm praying above all things that thou mayest prosper, number one, and be in health, number two, even as thy soul prospereth. Number three, that threefold blessing of that verse will be yours in Jesus' name. It says, I'm wishing, I'm praying, I'm designing, I'm beseeching God above all things that thou mayest prosper. That mayest prosper and that mayest be in health, even as, even as, even as the proportion, the level of your spiritual prosperity will determine how prospered you are, even in the natural, and how healthy you are in your body, because they all go together, they are related together. He's telling us, then I pray above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. We're looking at this a lifetime a lifetime of divine healing number one the condition of lifetime divine healing the condition of lifetime divine healing number two his commitment to our lasting divine health he has committed himself he has committed himself his commitment to our lasting divine health number three is the confirmation of long life and desirable wholeness the confirmation he confirms it he has confirmed it in the lives of other people and then he says as i was faithful unto them i'm going to be faithful unto you and i'm going to bring a confirmation in your life the confirmation of long life and desirable wholeness i pray that number one you'll possess number two you will possess 
Number three, you will possess in Jesus' name. Come on to number one now. Tell me number one. Say it. You need to say one, two, three, go. The condition of lifetime divine healing. We're looking at Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. Somebody said, I know that verse. I read it before. And I'm not going to bother to open my Bible. I'm just going to be looking. Where well, you drank water today, yesterday. And when we present water to you again, you say, I've drank that before. I'm not going to look at that again. You saw the light, the sun yesterday. I saw the sun yesterday. I'm going to not going to look at that today. We're going to give you bread. I ate bread yesterday. I don't need bread again. Of course, you need it today. You knew this before, and the newness of this verse, and the real strength in this verse, and the real power in this verse will come in your life today in Jesus' name. Exodus chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 26. And I want you to notice one word: if I have, if I have, is saying, if thou shalt if you will the condition the condition many people they live carelessly they just live a careless life a carefree life and they say god is god god is wonderful and god is faithful yes he's faithful he's faithful according to his condition he says there's a condition if we're going to have a lifetime that is a long sustained divine healing there is a condition that's why it says and said if thou wilt diligently hacking if thou will diligently hacking you see that word before the hacking diligently there are some people when you talk to them and they are looking at you but they're not hearing everything you're saying their mind is wandering somewhere else they are not diligently listening other people they listen to the superficial things we say they do not know the depths and the lengths and the breadth and the circumference and the, and the territory of everything we're saying. They do not know the consequence of what we're saying. They just listen superficially. Other people, they listen with one half of their mind and their half, the other half of their mind is thinking of another thing. But it says, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, that means that you listen to his voice alone. You know, the stranger will talk, you block that out. Satan will talk, you block that out. Society will talk, you block that out. Ignorant people will talk, you block that out. Unbelievers will talk, you block that out. Even your own natural self might talk, you block that out. And then you open your ears only to the voice of the Lord your God. And that's what he says, if thou... If thou, if no matter what others do, and no matter what others think, no matter the attitude of other people, if thou in particular, and you say, I've made up my mind, this is the word, I'm going to listen to the word, I'm going to diligently hack into the word. If thou, if thou, in spite of what others say, in spite of what others say, if thou wilt diligently hack into the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight. You know, it's very simple. Live it one day at a time. In fact, break it down. Live it one hour at a time. Break it down. Live it one minute at a time. You know, this minute, I can obey the Lord. Just one minute. And just five minutes, I can obey the Lord. And just 30 minutes, I can obey the Lord. And just one hour, I can obey the Lord. Moment by moment, hour by hour, day by day. And days will go to weeks. And weeks will amount to months. And months will amount to years. That's why it says that if one day at a time, a moment at a time that you are obeying the voice of the Lord and then he says to give ear to his commandments and he says to keep all his statutes I will put none of these diseases upon thee which are brought upon the Egyptians for I am the Lord I am the Lord tell me I am the Lord tell me tell me tell me that he let thee. I am the Lord that he let thee. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It says, I'm your personal doctor. It says, I'm your personal physician. It says, I'm your personal deliverer. I am the Lord that he lets thee. And then you put your hand in the hand of the Lord. You put your body in the hand of the Lord. You put your health in the hand of the Lord. You put your future in the hand of the Lord. I am. 
I am. I am. It will never fail. It will never become another thing. He is not I was. A God who was mighty before cannot do anything today. It will not be. I will be a God of the future that could do something in the future. I cannot do something today. I am the Lord and this morning he is the Lord. I said this morning, he is the Lord. And he will take all sickness away from us in Jesus' name. And then any sickness you hear of Egypt, you'll not be afraid. Because, oh say, that belongs to Egypt, it's not mine. Egyptian flu is not mine. Egyptian cancer is not mine. Egyptian tuberculosis is not mine. Egyptian HIV AIDS is not mine. Egyptian blindness will not be mine. Egyptian glaucoma will not be mine. Egyptian cataract will not be mine. Egyptian diabetes will not be mine. Only what comes from heaven will be mine. Have you heard of heavenly cancer? Have you heard of heavenly tuberculosis? Have you heard of heavenly romanticism? Only what comes from heaven will be mine because all the things that are coming from Egypt, I reject them, I resist them, I will not have them in Jesus' name. From the top of your head to the tip of your toe, heavenly blessing, heavenly healing, heavenly transformation will revitalize your body in Jesus' name. I'm coming now to Deuteronomy chapter 7. We're looking at the condition of lifetime, 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 divine healing. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 7 and we're looking at verse 12. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and we're reading from verse 12. All those Egyptian things, they are gone and gone forever. I said they are gone and gone forever. We're looking at chapter 7 verse 12. Wherefore, it shall come to pass. If, see that... The condition a ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which is swear unto thy fathers, which is swear unto thy fathers. You know, there are some things God said. And you didn't have to swear. He just said them. And they're going to be fulfilled. But to, for you to have double assurance. And for you to have a triple assurance. And for you to have a kind of multiple assurance. And for you to have an unchanging, an unwavering assurance. He gave the promise. He said, listen, listen. I gave many promises. I didn't have to swear. Because anything I say, I'm going to do. And you can be very sure, even if I don't swear. But now for you to be very sure, beyond any shadow of doubt, that Satan cannot reverse this. That man cannot reverse this. That enemies cannot reverse this. That the powers that be cannot reverse this. He put even an oath on each. What did he say? Look at verse 15. And the Lord will take away from thee. How many kinds of sicknesses? all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee but he will lay them upon all them that hate thee I need a good amen there yeah. the Lord is saying all those things you read about in Egypt in Babylon what came on Nebuchadnezzar his head turned and then they drove him out that's for Babylon, it will not come to you. And then what came on Pharaoh will not come to you in Jesus' name. And what came upon all of them because the Lord has said, if, 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 if this is what you are going to do, and then you are going to be obedient to the watch of the Lord. The Lord is saying, you are free from all those sicknesses of Egypt. You are free today, you are free tomorrow. You are free this week, you are free next week. You are free this month and you are free next month. You are free this year, you are free next year. You are free for the rest of your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at Job. We're looking at Job chapter 11. Job chapter 11. And I'm reading here from verse 13. Job 11 verse 13. Job 11. We're looking at verse 13. It says, if, see that again. If, if thou prepare thine heart and stretch out thy hands toward him. It says, so stretch out your hand toward, if iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away. 
and let not wickedness dwell in the tabernacles for then thou shalt lift up thy face without spot yea thou shalt be steadfast and shall not fear and shall not fear and shall not fear no fear for your life anymore in Jesus name because thou shalt forget thy misery and remember it as waters that pass away thine age shall be what clearer than the noonday that's divine health right there thine age shall be clearer thine age shall be clearer what does it mean clearer clearer than the noonday you know sometimes when some people when you have a, you know a particular sickness and it's internal and it's there and then you go to the doctor the doctor says no we need an x-ray here and because when we take the x-ray we will know what is there and we'll know where it is and then somebody goes uh, you know inside that cubicle whatever or lies down on that thing and then they examine everything and then they say okay you can wait over there and they're going to bring out the x-ray and then when they bring out the x-ray they call you they say so and so or they call them not you again i said not you again i said not you again and then they call the person they say look at this dark spot here look at this dark spot here and then the doctor might take out a pen or a pencil and circle something and then he'll point at this and point at this but the lord is saying now after this morning session your x-ray will be clearer than the noon day your brain will be clearer than the noon day and all your bone structure and everything and when they look at that x-ray the doctor will say i never saw any healthy person in like this in my life before you are the first person i'm seeing that will take x-ray from the head from the ear from the nose from the throat from the chest and from the belly and from the leg and from the knees and everywhere and everything is clearer than the noon day it is yours in jesus name and then it shall be clearer than the noonday and thou shalt shine forth and thou shalt be as the morning and thou shalt be secure because there is hope and yea thou shalt dig about thee and thou shalt take rest in safety it will happen to you in jesus name and that's what the lord is telling us is telling us that the condition is there the condition is there i'm going to look at john now john chapter 5 john chapter 5 john chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 5 in john chapter 5 we're reading from verse 5 here it says in verse 5 a certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years when jesus saw him lie that is lying down and knew that he had been now a long time in that case it says unto him will thou be made whole the same question is coming to you today will thou be made whole answer now will thou be made whole and then the impotent man answered him sir i have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool but while i am coming another step it down before me jesus says unto me unto him and jesus is saying to you right now rise up take up thy bed and walk rise up take up thy bed and walk rise up take up thy bed and walk and immediately the man was made whole immediately the man was made what he was made whole look at verse 14 in verse 14 after what jesus findeth him in the temple that's what you find you after you're healed after you are made whole after you are delivered after you are blessed after your prayer has been answered that's the place to find you jesus findeth him in the temple and he said unto him behold thou art made whole see no more lest a worse thing come on thee that's the condition there all the sins of your life in the past you get healed now you get saved 
you get delivered you also get saved and then you abandon all those sins you'll not go back into them and that's why jesus said the condition of divine healing and to retain that divine healing and to abide in that divine healing is that you will go and sin no more thou art made whole sin no more lest the worst thing come on thee and that man must be trembling saying i suffered for 38 years and then the lord has said if i go back to say something worse than 38 years of sickness of suffering will come upon me because of that he kept a righteous life by the grace of god by the strength of the lord that same strength and that same grace is available for you and you will live a righteous life in jesus name point number two now is his commitment to our lasting divine health his commitment to our lasting divine health he has committed himself to this that is going to keep us healthy he'll keep you healthy i said he'll keep you healthy we're looking at jeremiah chapter 33 jeremiah chapter 33 he has committed himself and that commitment is true because the faithful god and he brings the confirmation to his word he brings a fulfillment to his word he tells us in jeremiah chapter 33 and i'm reading from verse 6 jeremiah chapter 33 and we're looking at it in verse 6 behold i will bring it health and kill I'll bring it health and cure. I'll bring it health and cure. I will cure them. And then he says, I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. I will bring them health and cure. How will that happen? Look at verse 3. Call unto me. And I will answer thee. And show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Look at verse 9, 3, 6, and 9. And it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise, and an honor before all the nation of the earth, which shall hear of all the good that I do unto them. And they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto it. The promise of health is there, and I pray you'll have it in Jesus' name. But, you know, Jeremiah was wondering. He wondered. He said, the Lord has promised us health. And then he looked at the children of Israel, the people of Judah, and he saw their condition. Some of them were weak. Some of them were feeble. Some of them were sick. Some of them were sickly. Some of them were infirm. Some of them were impotent. He said, but why? See what the Lord has promised. I'm looking at Jeremiah. You see his bewilderment. Jeremiah chapter 8, you see his surprise. Jeremiah chapter 8, you see the amazement. He was surprised. He said in chapter 8 verse 21 verse 22 then i'll back up to verse 21 it says is there no balm in gilead is there no physician there why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered it surprised him he said look at what the lord has promised and he is the great physician he is a great healer and he is a faithful physician, a faithful healer. This is what he said he will do. And then as he saw them feeble and sick and sickly and going through pain and going through this and that. And they were as sick as the Egyptians were. As sick, as infirm, as the Babylonians were. And that surprised him. What is the difference? That's why he said, we're coming back now to verse 21. For the heart of the daughter of my people, I am hurt. I am black, astonishment has taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Then he says, why then? Why then? Why then? Why then? As we look at the church, and Christ is the head of the church, and he went through Capernaum, and he went through all, the, all those cities, he went through all those villages, and he healed everyone. He healed them all, he healed them all, he healed them all. They were not even his church because they were just coming from outside. Those ten lepers came and they cried out, O son of David, you can heal us. And then he said, go show yourself to the priest. While they were going on the road, they were all healed. And this other man came and he kneeled down worshiping 
him, if, if that window can cleanse me, and he cleansed him. And but Himeos came, son of David, have mercy on me. He opened his blind eyes. And then somebody there in the synagogue had been a withered hand, stretch out the hand, he stretched out the hand, and he healed him. And then a man that was more blind, he made clay and put it there, go watch inside Loam, and thou shalt be healed. He went and came back seeing. And then he saw the you know all the that woman that was bent down by because of the spirit of infirmity lo 18 years he touched her and said woman thou art loose and he was loose from the infirmity and then when he did that for all those people outside think about the church of the living god and the church of jesus where he is the cornerstone he is the foundation he is the head he is a healer he is a savior he is all in all for us and many people are sick and many people are infirm and many people are feeble and the lord is saying is there no balm in gilead is there no physician there how about a great physician how about the song we sing every time jesus only and jesus ever he is our savior he is our healer he is our sanctifier he is the baptizer and the holy ghost he is the coming king if he is still the healer why is it that many people are sick? That was the bewilderment of Jeremiah. And he said, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no power in the church of the living God? And is there no healing in the church of the living God? And is there no physician there? How about a great physician? He says, why then, why then is the health of the daughter of my people not recovered? And Jeremiah is going to tell us now the reason why we're looking at chapter 17 of Jeremiah. And I'm looking at verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 17 and I'm looking at verse 5. It says, Thus says the Lord, cause it be the man that trusteth in man. That's the problem. We're no more trusting in Christ our Savior. No more trusting in Christ our healer. No more trusting in Christ our sanctifier. We're trusting in man. We're trusting in that person. We're trusting on the mountain. We're trusting on the valley. We're trusting in the fire. We're trusting in this. We're trusting in that. We're trusting in that prophet. We're trusting in that prophet. Prophet, we're trusting in that ministry, we're trusting in that fellowship, we're trusting in those in those other places. He said, That's the reason why that our physician is there, the great physician is there, and the Lord is there, the head of the church is there, the one that said, You call upon me, I will answer you. Is there? We're not calling upon him. He said, These signs shall fall them that believe in my name, they shall cast out devils. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. We're not trusting trusting him he went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil were not trusting him he said call upon me and i will answer you and i will show you great and mighty things that you knew not and we're not trusting him he has said i'm going to bring health and kill unto them i will restore them everything they have lost i will give unto them and we're not trusting him that's the reason why. And then he surprised Jeremiah. He said, why? Why is the health of my people, of the people of God, not restored? We're going to turn everything around today. I said we'll turn everything around today instead of trusting in the arm of flesh, instead of trusting on those, on those, you know, mountain valley, whatever it is, we're going to trust the Lord today. It says in Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5, thus says the Lord, cause said is the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm, whose heart departed from the Lord, whose heart departed from the Lord, a change will come. I said a change will come. That change is coming upon your life already today in Jesus' name. Proverbs, Proverbs, Proverbs. I'm reading chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. Proverbs chapter 3. We're looking at verses 7 and 8. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be hell's to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. It says, how are we going to have health? This divine health we're talking about. Healthy in the morning. Healthy in the afternoon. Healthy in the night. Healthy in the day. Healthy every day. Healthy in the week. Healthy in the month. Healthy all the days of our lives. It says, be not wise in their own eyes. Let your wisdom be Christ. Let him be the one that directs you and controls you and guides you. And then he says, fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health unto thee. Look at chapter 4. Chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 20. Chapter 4, reading from verse 20. 
It says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, is telling us how this divine health, continual health, perpetual health, permanent health, year to year health, year round health will be yours. They'll be yours in Jesus' name. Look at it, chapter 4, verse 20. It says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sins. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto, they, unto those that find them. And hells and hells and hells to all their flesh. When you saturate your mind, your brain, your body, your ears, your eyes with the word of God. And you are not going to allow that to depart from you. When the word of God, the promises of God, the word of God, the proclamation of the Lord, the word of God, the prophecy of his word. When you declare, when you declare that. And when you understand that, and when you behold that, when you are looking at that every time, you're not looking at your sickness, you're not looking at your symptoms, you're not looking at your pain, you're not looking at whatever it is that may be screaming from your body. You say, it's the word, it's the word, it's the word. And you will not allow the promise of the word to leave you. It says, let them not depart from thy eyes. Even that verse of scripture, that single promise, you read it over and over and over let them not depart from your eyes you open your bible again all those promises that are marked you read over and over and over let them not depart from your eyes and then when it appears the pain is you know the pain is still there you open the word again and you read and you see and then you view it again and you analyze it. you say this is mine he is my physician he is my healer by his stripes i am healed and you look at that again let them not depart from thine eyes keep them keep them keep them in the midst of thine heart not don't allow the sickness to affect your thought and don't allow infirmity to affect your thought the only thing that affects your thought is the word of god is the promise of god this is what he said he even swore about it he confirmed it with an oath and this is going to be i'm telling you there's no sickness that will hold you down I said, no sickness will hold you down. Because he said, for they are alive unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Health to all their flesh. Health to all their flesh. I will have it in Jesus' name. I said, I will have it in Jesus' name. Uh, you know, uh, there are some people, instead of looking at the word of God, looking at the promise of God, oh, they say, I know what I'm going to do. They will fast and fast and fast and fast. They fast, they will not read the Bible. They fast, they will not look at the promise of God. They fast, they do not allow the word of God, the promise of God, the power in that word to come into them and to transform their lives completely. They are only fasting and fasting and fasting. And then as they are fasting, they become leaner and leaner and leaner. And then we say, brother, what's that? He said, I'm going to, I'm going to fight this thing out. You know, I'm going to fast until I get healed. What promise are you depending upon? I don't know any promise. All I know, I'm going to fast until all these things are cleared away. What Bible passage are you looking at that you know that by, by stripes I'm healed? Where is that in the Bible? And then he went about doing good and healing all that oppressed of the Bible uh, the oppressed of the devil. Where is that in the Bible? And then uh, they came to him in the evening and then as many as came to him, he took a well the infirmity. Where is that in the Bible? And the prayer of faith shall heal the sick, shall save the sick. If they have committed sin, they shall be forgiven. Where is that in the Bible? He doesn't know a single verse on healing on deliverance, on dominion, on the authority of a child of God, the authority of the believer, only fasting and fasting and fasting. No, it will not do you, but when you come back to the word of God, come back to the word of God, this word will get every sickness out of your life in Jesus' name. Look at Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58, I'm reading from verse, verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. That's why I shout, by the way. You know, some people say, why don't you talk gentle and just talk to us and just say the word of God said. And as the word of God has said, then the Lord will fulfill it. That one, does that sound like a trumpet? Tell me out loud. 
the one that sounds like a trumpet when i lift up my voice look at that again cry aloud cry aloud you know sometimes some people they obey one part of the bible they don't obey the other part of the bible they say i don't do this i don't do this but he told you to do this other one do it when you're preaching how do you how do you preach cry aloud everybody say cry aloud Cry aloud, spear not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and they light to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the covenant or the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice, and they take the light in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted? You see that? Wherefore have we fasted? S think about that. Wherefore have we fasted? Say they, and thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no, no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, ye you find pleasure, and exert all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate. They fast, they're bitter. They fast, they're angry. They fast, they are unforgiving. They fast and they are having I mean, hatred. With all the fasting and fasting and fasting, hatred is still there. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the feast of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is he to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast, an acceptable day of the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of, of wickedness and to undo the, the heavy body and to let the oppressed go free the people that feel oppressed by your action let them go free and then he says and they and that she break every yoke is not to is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house when thou seest the naked that thou cover him and thou hide not and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh then if you do that right not just the fasting not just i'm not eating not don't you know i i, I fasted seven days 14 days 21 days 30 days whatever not that one he says if you do the right thing and you bring compassion and mercy and love and obedience to the word of god and then you are generous to the people who are needy and poor and you are representing god who is the supplier of all their needs and god is using you to supply what they need he says then in verse 8 shall thy light break forth Forth as the morning this day your light will break forth and thy health see that and thy health and thy health shall spring forth speedily and thy righteousness shall go before thee and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward it will happen in Jesus name point number three now is the confirmation of long life and desirable wholeness the confirmation the confirmation of long life everybody say long life and desirable wholeness we're coming to deuteronomy chapter 4 deuteronomy chapter 4 do you know that the lord has promised long life long life to every child of god long life to every child of god and he says the number of your days i will fulfill he will fulfill his word on your behalf in jesus name chapter 4 deuteronomy chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 39 know therefore this day and consider it in thine heart that the lord he is god in heaven above and upon the earth beneath there is none else thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments which i command thee this day that it may go well with thee it says 
keep my word, obey my word, listen to my word, and align your life with my word, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee, and that thou mayest prolong, prolong, prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. It says to prolong your life and live that long life. It says this is the secret. Look at my word. Be obedient to my word and long life will be yours. Chapter 6 verses 1 and 2. Chapter 6 verses 1 and 2. Now these are the commandments, the statutes and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that she might do them. Not only read them, do them. Not only hear them, do them. Not only appreciate them, do them. Not only memorize them, do them. And it's not only to preach them, do them. You see, when you become doers of the word, when it's not just, you know, I've attended every retreat, I've attended every conference, I've attended every congress, I've listened to all the faith clinics, but when you take the word of God to heart, and when you say this is to be obeyed, and this is not just to be appreciated, this is not just to be learned, I'm to take every detail of the word of God, all that I've heard, and then I'm to apply them to my life, my family life, my professional life, my spiritual life, and my daily life, my personal life and to apply the word to my life it says when you do them it says you do them in the land whither ye go to possess it that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God and keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command thee that thou and thy son and thy son's sons all the days of thy life and thy days and thy days may be prolonged our days will be prolonged in Jesus name. I'm reading chapter 17, chapter 17. Deuteronomy chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 18. Chapter 17, we're reading from verse 18. And it shall be when he seated upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of the law in a book out of all, out of that which is before the priest, the Levites. Here the Lord was talking to any that will become king in Israel. You see, at that time, there was no photocopying machine to photocopy all the pages of the scriptures for them. There was no printing press to print the Bible, the word of God for the king or for anybody. And there was no scanning machine or kind of a duplicating whatever that will help them duplicate the word of God. But that was, that was not an excuse. And the king was to take the pen in his hand. He was to look at the word of God and copy everything out. He wasn't even to give it to, you know, a subordinate somewhere, do this for me, copy this for me he was to copy that watch of God himself that's how serious it was and then he says in verse 19 and it shall be with him that word of God he has copied that word of God he has procured that word of God as it now possesses it says it shall be with him he shall read therein all the days of his life now printed the printing press is there Bibles are printed you have a copy of the Bible in your hand do you have your copy of the Bible there I know, but I just want to I just want to check up. Anybody, you have your Bible there? Where are you? Where is the Bible? Not empty hand, not empty hand. Bible. I said Bible. Everybody say Bible. You see, if everybody here will read this thing, you are lifting up and you read it and you digest it and you understand it and you meditate on it and you do what is there. Long life will be yours in Jesus' name. That book contains the secret of success, the secret of strength, the secret of power, the secret of victory, the secret of conquering, the secret of health, the secret of deliverance, the secret of dominion. People leave their Bibles at home and they run to the mountains somewhere looking for deliverance. What you left at home, the deliverance is there. People leave their Bibles at home and then they are running to the mountains somewhere and they're looking for dominion. The thing you left at home, the dominion is there. People leave their Bibles at home and they are running for power somewhere. The thing you left at home the power is there. Pick up that thing again and read and study and learn and obey and leave it out and the power of the Lord will walk in a mighty way in your life in Jesus name. You wake up in the morning, you read that
that book. You wake up in the morning, you learn from that book. You wake up in the morning, you underline those verses that are given to you. You wake up in the morning and then you store it in your heart. You saturate your mind with the word. You say, I'm going to obey that. And then when you get to the office, when you get to the market, when you get to the community during the day, everything you learn during the day, you're obeying that, you're obeying that, you're obeying that. And that is a secret of the victory in our lives. And that victory will be in every life in Jesus' name. Look at that verse 19 again, chapter 17, verse 19. It says, and it shall be with him. And he shall read therein all the days of his life, and he and that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, and keep all the words of the law and the, these statutes, and to do them that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren, and that he turn not aside from the commandment, and says to the right hand or to the left, and then it says, and to the end that he may prolong his days that's the reason why you know when we take this word this is what will prolong our lives that's what will prolong our lives just you know people they don't understand that and they're searching helter skelter how their lives will be prolonged now we know the secret and if you keep the secret and you keep to this district your your life will be prolonged in jesus name that he may prolong his days in his kingdom he and his children in the midst of Israel we're looking at Proverbs chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 Proverbs chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 long life long life everybody say long life is coming it will come to every one of us in Jesus name we're looking at Proverbs chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 my son forget not my Lord forget not my law and it says let thine heart keep my commandments the lord is talking to some people he says for length of days for length of days for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee this word of god that we're hearing it says long life it will add unto you long life it will add unto you. proverbs chapter 10 verse 27 Proverbs chapter 10, verse 27. It says, The fear of the Lord prolongeth days. The fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord. When you, when you fear the Lord reverentially, you reverence Him, you honor Him, you obey Him, you respect Him, you exalt Him, and then you are, you are constantly obeying His word. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. I pray that will not happen to you. We're looking at chapter 28, Proverbs chapter 28, and I'm reading from verse 16. Proverbs chapter 28, and we're looking at verse 16. Proverbs 28, we're reading from verse 16. It says, the prince that uh, wanteth uh, understanding is also a great oppressor. But he that hateth covetousness, he that hateth covetousness, and covetousness is linked with, he, with stealing. You hate stealing, you hate cheating. You hate fraud, you hate all those uh, practices, you hate all the internet kind of dubious uh, business, you hate all that. He that hated covetousness shall prolong his days. He that hated covetousness shall prolong his days. I pray that long life will come to us. We're looking at Ephesians, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, prolonging your days, extending your days, and lengthening your days. Long life, long life. This is the commitment of the Lord to long life and desirable wholeness in ephesians chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 1 ephesians chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 1 children obey your parents in the lord obey your parents in the lord for this is right you know some people read that and it's okay that one is talking to children don't you know that when john the beloved wrote he referred to all the members of the church as children 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 and when jesus was talking to all his disciples he referred to them as children we're talking about the household of faith here he says children obey your parents in the lord parents in the lord father in the lord mother in the lord or you know our ministers our pastors 
us our overseers who are teaching us the word of God. We are their children. And he says, children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father now, your natural father and your natural mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee. That it may be well with thee. You know, sometimes as you look at the younger generation in their schools, in their colleges and universities, it's like instead of the teachers teaching them only the mathematics and only the chemistry and only biology and only their you know their subject area they branch away from their subject and they're teaching them rebellion teaching them how to say no to their father how to say no to their mother hey teacher that's not what you are paid for you're not paid to show the children how to rebel, how to disregard. You know, you are paid to teach them the real subject you are to teach. But they leave all the subjects and they're teaching, don't, don't follow your father to church, don't follow your mother to church. Be an independent boy, be an independent girl and think for yourself. Teacher, that's not what we're paying you for. We're paying you so that you teach them the regular subject. We pastors are there, we'll teach them about behavior, about character about honesty, about integrity, about faith in God, about the fear of God, which is the beginning of wisdom. But you know, because of that kind of situation, many children are the sick. It's, you know, you're a guy, you're strong, and you have a strong mind where you can say no to daddy and say no to mommy. And the members of the church, too, the sick, you know, we're very strong when a member of the church can look their pastor in the face and say, no, we're not going to do that. Hey, that's not the way to love life look at that again children obey your parents and the lord for this is right honor thy father and thy mother which is the first commandment to promise that it may be well with thee and then it says that thou mayest live long where tell me out loud live long on the earth that long life will come to us in jesus name and now I'm going to read from Psalm 91. Psalm 90, I know you know it, but open it, open it. Because there is a, there is a very secret of long life. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, He is my fortress, He is my God. In Him will I trust. Surely, surely, surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. And from the noisome pestilence. Uh -uh. I know you've heard it before. There's no more amen. There was amen last year. There was amen 10 years ago. When you first had this. When, what is Psalm 91? What is Psalm 91? And then I read you said amen, amen, amen. But now 20 years after I read this and there's no amen. If you don't say amen, I will say amen. It says in verse 3. It says surely it shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. And from the noisome pestilence, it shall cover thee, it shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at no day. A thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But, 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 it shall not come near thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast put that, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. But he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands. Lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. It says, thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under thy feet. Because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him, I will set him on high, and because he has known my name, he says, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. The Lord will answer your prayer this morning in Jesus' name. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. I will honor him. Hey, hey, look at this one. This is something. I said, this is something. This is something. 
you need to stand up and enjoy this one stand up stand up stand up this is something it says with it says and with 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 long life will i satisfy him and show him my salvation that salvation is here now that deliverance is here now that dominion is here now that health is here now that power is here now i will long life will i satisfy him i will show him my salvation god is going to show you something today he's going to show you something today open your mouth and pray and tell the lord he will show me he will show me he will show me all the long life anything that will cut short your life Life, the Lord is canceling from your life right now. All that cancer, all that tuberculosis, all that kidney problem, all that infirmity, all that disaster, all that disease, the Lord is canceling right now with long life, long life, long life. Will I satisfy him? And I will show him, I will show him my deliverance, my health, and my salvation. Call upon the Lord, call upon the Lord. The promise is there. Remember, if thou will diligently akin to the voice of the Lord your God, block out every other voice, block out every other idea, block out every other thought, and say, Lord, here am I, here am I. I'm depending upon your word, I'm trusting in your word. Lord, here am I, I trust the word. I believe the word. I put my confidence and trust and faith in the word. And that is the word that will put you over. Will put you over. Will put you over. Disease will not have any power in your life anymore. Infirmity will not have power in your life anymore. And remember, remember, remember when you repent of your sin. When you turn away from all evil and when you have the salvation of the lord and when you have obedience to the word of the lord then it says the healing health of the lord and the saving health of the lord will come in your life you can tell the lord you can tell the lord you can tell the lord oh lord i'm going to be obedient obedient to your word obedient to your word obedient to your word and that obedience grants you that obedience grants you that obedience grants you the healing, the health, the deliverance, and the dominion. Make up your mind. Sin brings sickness. Righteousness and holiness will bring health and healing. Obedience to the word of the Lord. That our leaders and pastors and the GS that they're teaching us will bring long life. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right, that it may go well with thee, and then you'll prolong your life on the earth that the Lord has given you. Believe the Lord, believe the word. That's the word that brings fulfillment into our lives. We're not healed by emotional outburst. We're healed by dynamic faith built on the word, established on the word. We're not healed by indefinite fasting. On scriptural fasting, we're healed by faith in the word and faithfulness to the word. In Jesus' name, we pray, and the real believer said. And those who believe, those who believe, those who believe that their healing is there already and your health is there already and that long life is there already and those believers said it's yours in Jesus name. I said it's yours in Jesus name. Everything the Lord has provided for you, nobody will take it away from you. 
you will enjoy them to the fullest in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, 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 in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. Every word of God, every word you have given us, we believe and it's going to be ours in Jesus' name. You said this will be a year of revival, a year of renewal, a year of healing, a year of health, a year of signs and wonders. Oh Lord, we believe, make it so in Jesus' name. We're asking right now, oh Lord, we're asking that everyone having any sickness, any infirmity, any deformity, any part of the body, whatever the disease is called, I command you now, come out in Jesus' name. I pray, O oh Lord, touch their flesh. Touch their lives. From the head to the toe, touch them. Heal them in Jesus' name. Let supernatural strength and health come into everyone right now. And all those debilitating, uh, debilitating diseases, I command you right now, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, no feebleness in our midst. No disease in our midst. No sickness in our midst. Fulfill your word. Fulfill your word. Fulfill your word. You said, I will take sickness out of the midst of them, in the midst of your people. Every boy, every girl, every youth, every student, every father, every mother, every brother, every sister, take sickness away. Take sickness away. Take it away from the midst of us in Jesus' name. All our leaders, all our overseers, all our pastors, all our workers, full-time workers, everybody, oh Lord, I would have been serving you. You said, we will serve the Lord. You will bless our bread. You will bless our water. Oh Lord, I pray, every worker, you touch them right now. Touch their husbands, touch their wives, touch their families. Heal them in Jesus' name. And Lord, some people are gone already, but Lord... We close that gate of premature death. In our church, we close that gate of premature death. And Lord, I proclaim life to your people. Long life to your people. Where we will live long in Jesus' name. Our wives will live long. Our husbands will live long. Our leaders will live long. Our workers will live long. Our members will live long. Lord, I circle everyone. I protect everyone. I cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. And I pray, oh Lord, anything that has caused premature death in the past, whether it is cancer, whether it is kidney problem, whatever it is, I command you, go out of our church in Jesus' name. Lord, your people in the past that were faithful, you kept them alive for a long time. Your people are faithful here. We're keeping the word of God as we hear the word of God. If we didn't know it before, we acted ignorantly. The moment we know you know us, Lord, we always obey the word by your grace. And I'm praying, oh Lord, as you have given us faithfulness and faith, I pray no sickness again. No infirmity again. Set your people free in Jesus' name. And those of our members who are not able to come here, maybe they're in the hospital, maybe they're in their houses, maybe because of weakness, I cannot bear the rigor of that retreat because I know who I am, I know the way I am. Oh Lord, I pray in the houses where they are now, I send forth your power. In the hospitals where they may be now, I send forth your power. And I command you, brother, sister, wherever you are, hear the voice of the Lord, rise up in Jesus' name. And I pray for all the people who are here, oh Lord, supernatural strength, supernatural power, and supernatural health given to everyone in Jesus' name. Testimonies in every mouth, signs and wonders for everyone, miracles for everyone, healing and health for everyone, long life for everyone. Confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.